What's up, guys? It is Callus Crew Challenge 2, round of 16. Time for a little GSC action. This potentially could end the match between these teams. It is our Cinder Rella story, the Lords of Cinder. Uh, that's represented by Roy Stoproar slash, uh, slash Shortage, who's chosen this really weird alt here, the real Crystal, but it's not because Crystal is Crystal, the real Crystal here not to be confusing the one with the name the real crystal is actually shortage on the bottom and then just crystal up here is the authentic article she's crystal so that's a little confusing thanks for doing that roy totally won't throw anybody off while i'm doing this narration especially non-english speakers listening to this how could you get confused with crystal and the real crystal when the real crystal isn't the real crystal Good stuff. That aside, uh, Crystal is part of the Cryos B team uh, alongside Vileman and Crying, and she needs to win this match or they're eliminated because you may have seen the RBY match already on the channel between Christos and Vileman. Christos took that down. He is 2-0 in this tournament, both times in RBY. And that's going to make Cryos beat Team me to win both the remaining matches. So Shortage can clutch it here and keep the Cinderella story alive. This is a team that people did not think were going to go super far and didn't have very high expectations for. He can go one more step towards proving them wrong with a victory here. Uh, I think these players both have some amount, medium amounts of experience in GSC. Not pros nor complete noobs. It should be good. But like I said, uh, if Shortage on the bottom wins, his team is through. If Crystal on the top wins, then it forces a third match between Crying and Tenebrosite in Gen 9, which unfortunately, if that happens, you will not see that on the channel. No, you can see it. In Discord, we have the replays, or you can catch it live if you want to join the Discord server. There's a link in the description. Most importantly, please consider donating to the tournament. It gets the prize pool up. It makes me keep doing these money tours. Everybody wins. Players are happy. I'm motivated. More tours for you guys to enjoy. Everybody wins. Please consider donating if you have the means. All right, guys. Best of three GSC. Definitely what I want to do right now at this time of night after work while tired. It's going to be great. Here we go. Shortage, the real crystal. That's so... Ugh, I hate you, Roy. Why did you name it that? Roy is on the bottom. Crystal, the authentic article, the actual crystal, the female Canadian crystal, on the top. And after trading on turn one, Executor for Raikou, she has a Smeargle in the back. Uh, this is not my area of expertise. Uh, I know that BP, after all the nerfs and changes, is not as busted in this gen as it is or was in other gens. Um, ah, man, I'm not up to date with GSC enough to, to know exactly what they changed when they changed it. I know that trap passing, like mean look spider web plus like pass or whatever was allowed at one point but i don't think that it is anymore uh something that we saw in the previous callus crew challenge i don't remember who the opponent was it was pogis against somebody uh god I, it's all coming back to me now i don't remember the exact circumstances but it was it was pogis against somebody and we spent the first 50 60 plus turns of that because Pogis had some mean look slash spider web baton pass garbage. PP stalling something down to struggle and then proceeding with the rest of the match. And then after 50, 60 turns of torturous, boring that, they just played a normal game and Pogis didn't win. It, uh, it was something. But needless to say... <laughs> Uh, I pitched to Fear, talking to him privately. Dude, look at this replay. There's absolutely no fucking way that this is good for the tier. 
It's not good for the tier. It's not good for the spectators. It's not respectful of anybody's time. What are we doing? He agreed. Soon after they took a vote on it, they changed it. I, that, that's what I got for you. I don't know the exact rules at this moment pertaining GSC Baton Pass, but I know that you at least can't trap them, so it makes it a lot more manageable. We've got a Sub Vaporeon, which is a relatively... I mean, I'm going to get corrected by all the GSC historians on here. But a relatively new set as far as I'm concerned. It was always the set that I grew up with in like the Borat era of GSC. And there's a relevant crit, by the way, that would not have killed without a crit. But the... Uh, the set that I always grew up with in GSC with Vaporeon was Rest, Sleep Talk, Surf, and Growth, uh, which is still used. But the new thing, and not just on Baton Pass, is Sub Growth to Attacks, Surf, Ice Beam, Surf, Blizzard, what have you. And apparently it's, it's making some waves. It's making a splash in the metagame. This one relatively one-sided. I kind of didn't narrate much of this game. With BP, there isn't all that much to narrate. There was this initial trade, the Executor and the Raikou, and then, yeah, Vaporeon growth once behind the sub. Acid Armor, I guess, helped. And it just kind of swept. Uh, she found Surf twice with Sleep Talk, which mattered, and then she got a crit, which mattered, and... Yeah, I mean, it just left you in this position where it's not a premature forfeit. Shortage just can't stop this anymore. T-Tower would get donked by the super effective boosted surf. Uh, Cloyster, at best, could pop the sub, but then what do you do? I, I guess he could have tried to get there with Lax, but... Yeah, I Shortage was so far behind. I mean, BP is just one of those things where you either get there or you don't. Kind of works like that in every gen. It's not as all in in this gen the way that it was in gen 3 before they nerfed it 80 times or in other gens but yeah you get there you don't also of note you can't see the chat but uh these two who are friends and teammates and definitely on good terms with each other talking all sorts of shit back and forth but totally just in a joking loving way there's zero bad blood here these are buddies Anyhow, uh, Shortage now needs to win two in a row in order to win the match for his team and send them through to the round of eight. If Crystal wins here, or theoretical game three, that'll set up a Gen 9 showdown to determine the fate of each team. So I'm going to go ahead and set up what's going on here to try to avoid confusion. So we'll switch sides for continuity. The real Crystal username on the bottom with a male avatar is Shortage. It's Roy Stoproar. It is not actually Crystal. The authentic Crystal, the Canadian female Crystal with the Suicune avatar, that's actually Crystal on the top. Hope we're clear. So with that being said, we have a boosted Lax here. Trying to double-edge his way through stuff. But Skarm is going to check him. And that is going to begin cursing up as well. Uh, Crystal laid a layer of spikes beneath Shortage's team. And Shortage was not able to do the same just yet. But he's only shown the two pokes. Hey, there's something that can learn spikes. Thief there is actually pretty relevant though. Cloyster without its lefties is a, a lot worse. Maybe it just booms. I might have, but did go for the rapid spin there, so spikes removed for both. But that's totally fine. Starmie's resilient. Starmie has recover. Yeah, I mean, the Cloyster's going to get worn down over the course of the game, so that has got to be good for Crystal. That Thief was, was was quite solid. I don't know if it's like as good as stealing lefties from Lax, but it uh, is good for sure. It, it should mean that Crystal wins the Spikes War eventually. She's got one, if not two, spinners. Four, he doesn't always carry it. Starmie, I mean, also doesn't always carry it. But one or both of them are going to have it. And then, yeah, I mean, Roy should just never be able to keep spikes down. And every little damage now, even just rapid spin chip, is going to add up on the Cloister. So, pretty early. Uh, certainly far from an, an over game. 
But I think that Crystal did a real good thing with the Thief there and is going to probably reap the benefits of that if this game goes on the longer side, which it may. It's clearly a stally, a stallier team for Crystal. Roy's team looks a little more on the offensive side. They both do have Skarm, which can be real interesting if they end up Skarm on Skarm. They just check each other and over and over, and they it kind of goes nowhere. One of those exciting Pokemon mirror matches that we get sometimes. For those of you who don't know, and I assume most of you watching this do know, but Skarmory does not learn spikes in this gen. Uh, if you're wondering why the opportunity isn't being taken to spike, that would be because it can't. Forian Cloyster can, though. And one of those is on each of the teams. Titar could have a fire attack here, which Crystal does not play around, but it's an over-prediction pursuit there, and unfortunately for Crystal, a missed Toxic. There's a crit rock slide for shortage, though, and Lax is still asleep for Crystal as well. She's going to wake and try to get a rest off through Flinch, which she will do successfully, and out of the way she goes. Screech there, going to make future physical attacks, hit harder. Screech again on the switch. Starmie also threatening with a water attack. About half on Surf. And that's going to be the second time that Shortage is going to over-predict with Pursuit. Had he stayed in and gone for Rock Slide there, it would have done a fuck ton. Because remember, the Screech drop. Uh, so bad to worse there for Shortage. Crystal is going to not only out-predict him, but then also get a favorable damage roll on the second Surf. That would not have always killed and just like that, Crystal is up a mon, and the Cloister, remember, got its lefties stolen. And Crystal has the spikes advantage. So this looks all around to me like Crystal is in the lead. She's also up a game, so if she takes this down, and it's too early to call this done, obviously, but Crystal clearly ahead right now as far as I'm concerned. If Crystal wins this, it forces that Gen 9 matchup. Which, like I said, you won't see on the channel because I'm not covering Fairy Gens. I, I just I couldn't narrate Gen 9 if I wanted to. I don't know what half the mons or the moves even do. And I don't understand the whole terrestrial eyes, extraterrestrial, whatever the fuck they are. Change into different type mechanic. I don't know any of that stuff. So I'm sticking to the old school stuff. The stuff that I played in the good old days on the school bus. GSC, uh, I personally believe, and this is this is this is probably biased, and obviously your personal answer is going to depend on how old you are, what you grew up with, whatever. Uh, but I personally believe that in-game GSC is the best cartridge experience. Uh, the old school ones are really good, but uh, Heart Gold Soul Silver, which is certainly, I was an adult when those came up. It was certainly past my childhood, but Heart Gold Soul Silver might be the overall best and most complete Pokemon experience. Uh, certainly among the older games, I think Gold Silver Crystal in cartridge is probably the best experience. Pokemon Yellow is very good. Uh, Gen 4 in cartridge, Gen 5 in cartridge, pretty good. GSC is going to get my vote, though. And like I said, it's hard to not have bias because it really depends you know when there's so many years in between these games uh, how old were you where were you in life at the time that those came out what's the first thing you played so on and so forth but yeah i think gsc is the best in cartridge experience personally not too much has changed well okay well i it hadn't at the time that i started that sentence but Something has now changed. It's going to be a Thunder in the Raikou Sleep, which is a 1 in 3 chance. And then you have to hit the move, 70-30. So that was not the most likely thing in the world, but the variance that Shortage wanted hitting Thunder in the Sleep is going to occur. And that's going to take out the Fortress. And that is very critical because we're in a state now where the Spike is not down which is kind of surprising, honestly. I thought that Crystal was going to play the rest of the game with the Spikes advantage, 
that was actually really lucky and really relevant for shortage and that just that changes the game in a big way and unfortunately for this narrator it may change the game in a slows it the f down way with a spike down this might end a little sooner without the spike and with two teams i mean shortage isn't full-on stall crystals is pretty damn stally but with two stallier leaning defense leaning ish teams not full stall for either one but defensive leading teams for both and with neither player having spikes it it could be one of those games. I don't mind mixing in long GSC. Every now and again, I certainly wouldn't want to narrate, you know, three 200-plus GSC games a week or something like that. But I, I've been narrating GSC for a long time. I don't know you, viewer, who is watching this right now. You, you tell me, man. Tell me in the comments. But, uh... I don't know how long you've been following me, but I've been doing this YouTube thing a long time. The channel may not say that because in my my younger, ragier days, I actually have deleted my YouTube account twice. But there was a time, and I, maybe if you've been following me long enough to remember this, then God bless you, man. I appreciate it. But I, I actually I started my YouTube career back in like 2012, 11 years ago. I've been making videos pretty damn consistently since then. There was a time, and this is a long gone day when I was younger and had more free time, but uh, there was a time that I was narr I was uploading six, seven, eight, maybe ten, sometimes even more than that, videos every single week without exception. I did that for years. When I deleted my channel the first time, I deleted... A Eight years or whatever it was, maybe not quite that much. Six or seven years worth of content, like literally thousands of videos, like over 2,000 videos that I deleted. It, it's it's rough. I wholeheartedly regret that, and I wish I could have those videos back. It, you just can't. They're gone. I wish I can get them back. Not that, not that they were all good, and certainly the mic quality and the commentary quality. I'm not saying the videos were good. But just as like a, a piece of history, just as like a, man, I've been doing this for a long fucking time. Maybe one day when I'm when I'm in a mood, go back and check them out. I kind of wish I still had those. I do regret deleting them, but what are you going to do? But anyway, the, the point that I was making, and I don't know why the replay is spazzing out. I did not, I did not change it to faster there. It just, uh. I guess it's because there was nothing but switching for however many turns in a row. But yeah, I was freaking out handling all the switching. Uh, the point that I was making there before I went on that little that little side path. Uh, I've actually I've been narrating GSC for a long time. I mean, I've always been ADV main. It's always been my primary focus. But like even back in those days, 2013, 2014, whatever, I would occasionally splash a little. GSC in there. I have like old like SPL, SPL five, SPL six replays or whatever. Really long ones. I, I had some with like Earthworm playing like 300, 400 plus turn games. I, I don't remember who it was against, but I remember one of my old old videos, which of course is gone now. It was like an hour and a half of GSC grind that I, I just fucking. I sat there like a trooper, and I narrated the whole thing authentically. No side tangents, no fucking breaking out into song as I sometimes do. Just full-on actual narrating. I don't know where that callus went, but he's fucking dead. I don't, uh, I don't have that attention span anymore. I just don't. I don't have that time anymore either. I can't imagine sitting for an hour and a half for one for one game in a tier that I just don't know well enough to give you you know all the intricacies of what they might be thinking or what the calcs are or whatever there's just only so much you can say in in that amount of time especially when you're not an expert and can't get into well uh, this damage roll does between 43 to 52.1% so it's going to be a 60% chance of a kill here Pending a critical hit. I don't know that shit. I don't even know that in Gen 3. So you're just going to have to... 
<laughs> roll with me here in Gen 2. Could be a long one. It, uh, 122 turns, I mean, is not the norm. There is the stigma with GSC that it just, that it's always a grind, that it's always so long and every game is 200 turns, blah, blah, blah. That just isn't true. It, it can be very grindy, but it's not, it's not fair to say that every game is like that. There's aggro in the tier. There's, there's games that go, you know, 30 turns, 20-something turns, just like any other tier. But yeah, it uh, when it gets grindy in GSC, which perhaps it does more often than some other tiers, it, uh, it it's bad. It, it's real bad. It... Uh, It, it it can go two, three, four. I'll put it this way. There's a thing on Showdown. It wasn't there forever. They implemented it a couple years ago where after 999 turns, it can't get to 1,000. 999 is the hard cap. After 999 turns, Showdown just ends the battle and calls it a tie. There haven't been very many of those. That haven't just happened on purpose. There have not been a lot of those, but the good majority of those that have ever happened have been in GSC. Almost all of them have been in GSC. In fact, I would speculate, and I'm not positive, I don't have the inside showdown data, but I would speculate there are some tiers, OU tiers even, in which that has never happened since they implemented it, where no game has ever unintentionally gone to 9.99 and ended in a draw. But most of them are definitely in GSC. I would also say statistically, and again, I'm pulling this out of my ass, so grain of salt. But I bet if you ta- if you took the all the data across all nine OUs. And you ask the question, what percentage of your games go 150 or more turns? I would bet very strongly that GSC has the most. Not only the most, but like the most by a considerable enough margin to make it pretty definitive. And there's multiple reasons for that. Uh, The... First of all, rest is is busted in this tier. It works differently. So everything, not literally, but almost everything, carries rest. And then rest talk is very common. And when you find rest using sleep talk, it counts as if you just used rest. Hey, wait, stop. It's a knockout. Got ourselves a 4-4. So progress is being made in this game. Do I have to actually go back and narrate again? Why don't we do a quick check-in? Lax is at 78. Healthy Skarm, healthy Raikou, healthy Zap. Titar on its deathbed for Crystal. Skarmory healthy. Lax healthy. And that is where we are. But Titar uh, is damned if you do, damned if you don't. It's either going to die to the poison or it's going to die the next time it comes in on that spike that Crystal can no longer remove. So somehow, even though I was convinced that Crystal was going to have the spikes advantage since she stole the Cloister Lefties so early on and she had the spinner. It's actually somehow going to be Shortage who's going to play with the spikes advantage this game. Crystal's got the spike beneath her team and cannot remove it. So I'm not clear how exactly we got here. I mean, I am because I've been watching the game, but like that feels like that's not the way this was supposed to happen most of the time. And... It, yeah, you know, all of a sudden, it um, it doesn't look too crazy. Shortage just flat up, flat out up four to three, and with the spikes advantage, it doesn't seem insane anymore that Shortage could win this game. And if he does, that's it. Lords of Cinderella through to the round of eight, and Cryos B team out if Shortage pulls this out, which, like I said, doesn't seem insane anymore. It seems very much in the realm of something that could happen. Full set is known for, I believe, everything. But let's just go ahead and... Yeah, all the cards are on the table. All moves known for all living mons. So, 
do with that as you will. Uh, back to it, why are so many games stally in GSC? Like I said, rest and rest talk work differently. Uh, and then there's a lot of defensive tools, more so than offensive tools. Uh, crucial setup sweeper breakthrough offensive moves, Dragon Dance, Calm Mind, Quiver Dance, whatever. That stuff just doesn't exist yet. Has not yet been invented. Uh, as far as hazards are, are concerned, the only hazard in the game is spikes. There's no rocks, toxic spikes, whatever. Uh, you can only have one layer of spikes, so there's that. So progress is made more slowly in that way. A lot of defensive tools, everything is rest, there's only one spike. Uh, I would say the fact that Lax, which is a ubiquitous Pokemon in... In every single GSC team, every single serious GSC team, and it happens to be a fat mon that's hard to kill. That slows the tier down. Like I said, no setup moves, no dragon dance, no gom mind, whatever. That slows the tier down. And then this was still just like, and there might be a kill here. Okay, that's important. Shortage has crystal on the edge of the cliff and might send Lord, Lords of Cinder through to the round of eight, which is sick. I don't know who would have ever expected that but it's like really close to happening but yeah the other thing of what slows gsc down and brings us to a lot of these stall your games is that the stat creep of today it didn't exist back then you have mons that are non-legendary and like fairy gen ous that have stats you know 110 120 130 just these ridiculous numbers and it's just combined with the ridiculous moves that didn't exist back in the day. All the hazards, all the abilities. That's another thing. Abilities don't exist yet. You just you combine all that, and the mons are just so busted. Like, if you... It, it, not that this would be possible, but, like, if you plopped a Gen 7, Gen 8, Gen 9 team into a GSC match, you play by GSC rules still, but you just plopped a Gen 9 team into it, it would be a joke... The Gen 9 team would smoke the shit out of the GSC team. It just It's not fair. So yeah, all that stuff, all that stuff combined leads to what can be a slower, stallier tier. All that being said, getting back to the matter at hand, while it is not over, and while it still is totally possible for Crystal to win this game, it looks good for Shortage, and if he wins the Lords of Cinder, probably the biggest underdogs remaining in the tournament will be through to the round of eight, which in and of itself would be considered an overperformance in the eyes of many and is a pretty good showing when there were 32 teams and you make it down to the final eight teams. That means you finished in the top one-fourth of the tournament. Which, all things considered, especially given the quality of the of the pool, how strong the teams were, how many good teams there were and still are, I think that's a fine showing. You won two rounds when a lot of really, really strong teams won zero. Think about it that way. It's pretty good, right? But let's not count our chickens. Uh, Crystal does have... Two curse mons here, two curse rest mons, so she could set up, and that's exactly what she's doing right now. This really could take a minute because the Skarm here walls the crap out of both of Crystal's mons, and they can curse all they want, they'll just get Whirlwinded away. Whirlwind does not have infinite PP, of course, and. Uh, the trade-off here is that Shortage, his Skarm does not have Curse, so that's not going to set up anytime soon. Shortage's Lax has Curse, but it's super-duper walled by the Skarm. This, uh, this might still end up being longer than I want it to be. I mean, it already is, but we might be further from done than I want to be. We are... We have crossed turn 200 here. I'm really, I'm, I'm 
surprised and not in like a shortage stinks kind of way because I obviously don't think that I just I'm, I'm surprised that this is where we are and that shortage has managed to get into this position it really felt like he was pretty behind at one point in this game it really felt like crystal was in great shape her start was so good stealing the lefties and setting herself up to have very likely a spikes advantage for the rest of the game but Somehow Shortage has battled back, and somehow he has the spikes advantage. And is just flat out up 2-4. to four. I'm not sure where it ends. I don't... Uh, this is one of the areas of, of my, my weakness, my lack of knowledge within the tier. I don't... I don't know well enough how GSC late games play out. To give you any meaningful prediction as to what's going to happen here. If it were if it were ADV, I could tell you with high accuracy what's going to happen, what's supposed to happen, what the outs are for both guys, what the odds are for both guys. I, I know that tier. I just don't know this one well enough to know specifically what either one is going to do to actually close this out. I just look at it as kind of a newbie commentator of GSC. I mean, not new because I've been doing it for a long time, but... Newbie as in bad rather than newbie as in actually new. And I just kind of go, you know, it looks like it looks long to me. It's what it looks like. I don't know the nuances or who's going to close it out, but it looks like it's going to take a minute. And it sure has. Going to be turned 220 and counting. The good news is I don't think we're going to the full 999. And boy, my throat hopes not either. I do have my... I do have my drink here that I certainly may need to use at some point. Especially if we end up going to a third game. But yeah, no, this one, uh, it's a lengthy one for sure. The fake real crystal shortage. Looking pretty good. I think I had this backwards too. I think I had this backwards. I think I've been saying this whole time that uh, Lords of Cinder for the win. I Am I... Let me just... Didn't didn't the real Crystal... Like the real, real Crystal, the female Crystal win game one? Yeah, she totally did. So I'm, I'm making stuff up. So if... If Shortage wins this, which... I think he's supposed to. It just sends us to a game three. It doesn't... They don't win the match. So my bad. I've totally incorrectly stated that multiple times in this video so let me let me re-clear that up authentic crystal on the top with the coon one game one so if imposter crystal on the bottom roy wins this game which is looking like he very well may uh, it's not a lords of cinder match victory it's we go to game three sorry for the confusion on that after a long game it, it just it, give me a break Give me a break. <laughs> break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. But don't really, though, because Kit Kat... I mean, they're okay, but... If I had to list my top five candy bars, not that I'm a huge candy guy, Kit Kat wouldn't make the list. I would say... I would say my two favorite candy bars, easy, and I can go back and forth based on my mood, but it's got to be uh, Twix... And Three Musketeers would be my two, my two go-tos. I like Milky Way. I like uh, I like Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Whatever Reese's Pieces are good, but I'm gonna go with Twix and Three Musketeers. And I'm not sure which I like better. Probably Twix, but it depends on my mood. But those are the ones. Kit Kats are, eh, they're okay. I would not ask someone to break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. I don't like them enough to to take somebody else's germs and have them break me off a piece. Not that I'm a germaphobe. It's it's whatever. Even during COVID time, I don't care. Take a bite of your stupid Kit Kat bar and then pass me the other half. I'll eat it. I don't care. But Kit Kat's meh. Well, we managed to kill perhaps 10 turns at best with my with my candy bar deviation. Now let's talk about some of my favorite movies, shall we? 
Let's see, off the top of my head. Office Space. Uh, A Few Good Men. Shaun of the Dead. Gladiator. Uh, The Bourne Trilogy. Uh, The original Star Wars Trilogy. Uh, The Dark Knight. Oh, hey, hey, hey. I don't have to list any more movies that I like. The Real Crystal, which is the fake crystal, which is Shortage, does in fact get this one done. Took a fucking minute, 249 turns, quarter of the way to the to the timeout, which is, I can't even imagine. Can you imagine doing this game 4X to get to the fucking 999? I'm not narrating that. I'd put it on hyper fast and I'd walk away. I'd put on my playlist in the background, let you guys listen to some jams and fucking go do something else. It's now past midnight in real time. I've, uh, I'm up at 7 tomorrow morning going to work. Who does this shit? And after have to narrate a third game. It's brutal, guys. I, I, do, I not, do I not deserve your donations? It's not even me. It's not like you're paying me to do this. But, like, if you empathize with my plight, doesn't my tour deserve your donations? Let's see you narrate this shit at fucking midnight when you have to be up at 7 and go to work after you just work 10 hours. Let's see you fucking do it, man. It ain't easy. Narrate. You do it. Accepting guest narrators. Really appreciate the donations, guys. It's tough being me. It's tough being me. Hey, if this one goes long too, I can I can give you a list of reasons that it's tough being me and it's it's tough being the host. But let's go ahead and get to game three and hope that it's closer to 28 turns than 249 turns. All right, game three. Let's get the mumbo jumbo out of the way. We're switching sides for continuity. The real crystal, which is the fake crystal, the imposter crystal on the bottom is Shortage. That's Roy Stoproar. On the top, with the coon, is Female Authentic Canadian Crystal. Why Roy would do this, I don't know. Maybe it's an inside joke between the two of them, but it makes for funky narrating. The stakes are if Fake Crystal, Shortage, Roy, Bottom, wins this game... Then he wins the match, and his team wins the match, and they are on to the round of eight. If Authentic Crystal on the top with a coon, if she wins, then they force a game three between, or sorry, a match three between Tenebrosite and Crying in Gen 9. That's where we are. Now that we're on the same page with that, and thank Christ these... Do not look like two completely stally teams, but I won't count my chickens. Now that we're on the same page, we can get back to the game at hand. Uh, they both brought Chloe, Gollum, Zap, and Lax, obviously. So, going to be some similarities here, but the teams are not identical. There is a Jinx for Roy. Uh, is that Double Thief? Yeah. Uh Eggs stole some lefties, and Jinx stole some lefties. So, let's see. Zapdos got robbed, and who else got robbed? Nobody? Was it a fail? Did we? Did they both thief the same target? Get wrecked. Nice double thief, noob cakes. There's Toxic. You guys probably know this by now after watching... 249 turns of gold silver crystal but uh toxic is not as busted in this gen as it is in future gens the the poison stacks pretty slowly and like even after it starts to accumulate you just rest it away it's still a move stuff uses it it's fine it's 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 viable but not nearly as good not nearly as devastating and like Gen 3, when, like, your Swampert gets hit with it or whatever, it's just fucked if you don't have, like, a Bell user or Refresh or whatever. Not the case here in GSC. Everything just rested away. We've already got a knockout, though, and it's an important knockout. Snorlax, as we have established, is, in fact, the best poke in this tier. 
That's pretty good for Roy. He, uh... So the thing that it's left, he's stolen is dead. So if Jinx wants to steal something else, it can. Uh, Lax is dead on the other side, which anything trading one for one with Lax favors the person who didn't lose the Lax. And then Shortage is, is up and on. So uh, who knows? Last game, I thought... Well, okay, that crit mattered a lot. Shortage is in fantastic shape now. And Crystal shows last Pokemon champ. But yeah, last game I thought that Crystal was in awesome shape and was clearly ahead. And it took a million years, but Crystal didn't win. So who knows? Maybe Roy won't win, but it's he's in great, great shape right here. I can't emphasize that enough. Killing Lax mattered. Having another Thief kind of matters. The crit there that killed obviously mattered. You're flat out up 5-3. to three. Machamp could be tough. Zapdos is a, is a pretty good answer, but it happens to be Rock Slide Champ. So Machamp actually could be tough for Shortage to deal with. Uh, but th this is Shortage's game to lose, man. Uh, he, he does have to deal with the spike, but Gollum is a rapid spinner in this gen and should be in Gen 3, but I won't go on that tangent right now. But it's a spinner in this gen. We know there's no ghost on the other side. If it gets rapid spin off, then good to go. And there's a curse against the sleeping Mon. Oh, but Shortage again gets exactly what he needs. He wakes up right then and there and booms. And that allows the Jinx follow up. And now Machamp has to get out of the way. That, uh, this is Shortage's game to lose. He's, he's really, really in good shape right now. Machamp dead? No. Crystal took, I was going to say had balls there, but female, no balls, but had courage there, gutsy play. The Machamp would have just been dead if Jinx had attacked there, but yeah, had the courage to go for the switch there, get it in on the lax, big risk, but you kind of have to when you're this far behind. And is catching herself up a little bit, and crucially, Shortage has not been able to get a spin off. Gollum is very healthy, but was playing really, really afraid of a potential hidden power from Raikou. We did see it earlier and I missed it. I don't know what hidden power it is. I don't know what it hit or if it showed. Uh, obviously, if it is HP water, which is a thing in this gen, Gollum wants no part of that. But if it is just HP ice, which is more common, uh, Gollum can survive that. Machamp is now dead. I mean, Shortage is so far ahead, it's not even fucking funny, man. His game to lose... If he clutches this up, Lords of Cinder through to the round of eight. Uh, shortage looking good. Crystal is going to have to be spotless and lucky to pull this out. Stranger things have happened, but it looks really good. If I were a betting man, it, it, it's looking real good for Shortage. Here's the Raikou switch. Wakey, wakey. Thunder. Well, good thing Cloyster didn't stay in. It'd be super dead. Sleep talking power. Okay, so that's HP water. So that's very important. So maybe Crystal can keep the spike down because Gollum wants no part of HP water from Raikou. And Gollum wants no part of Surf from Cloyster. And those are the only two books she has left. So it's going to be difficult for Gollum to find a time to spin. But it's certainly not impossible. If Gollum can come in on a rest turn from Raikou, then you just click Rapid Spin. You just go for it. You have a 1 in 3 chance there. Uh, if you find anything other than HP Water, the spin gets off. Alternatively, maybe the play with Gollum, fuck the Rapid Spin. If you get that opportunity, you just click Boom. And you take something with it, and it becomes a 3 on 1 game. And you should be good, right? No matter what you kill. Three on one, you should just be able to win, right? So yeah, maybe that's the play. Maybe fuck rapid spin. Just click boom as soon as you get a chance. Uh, either way, this is this is going to be a hard game for, for Shortage to fuck up. Crystal is, is going to need, like right now, surf crit. Stuff like that. She gave herself an opportunity. If you crit there, Zapdos dies. I mean, hey, there you go. Shortage... Did he... He had sleep talk and just didn't do it. 
Did he fuck up the rest count? Did he think he was going to wake up? Did he just click rest there and not get there? Why would you ever not sleep talk there? And there's a crit as well. I, is this is this a mega, mega throw for shortage? Gollum would just die to HP water, so it's only Jinx now. Double back to Gollum. Sure. Right, Thunderbolt is great, but like, what about the HP water? Cloister. Boom. Okay. One on one. Raikou's faster. Freeze or lose? Wow, I I'm stunned. I am fucking stunned. I don't... That What a choke. What a fucking choke. That is one of the worst ones I have seen since... Gaku trying to use Substitute. Or Jabba switching in fucking Flygon to Ice Beam. That was... I, I don't want to shit on Roy for the rest of the video. Nor am I a GSC expert, so uh, I will I will keep my my criticism to myself. But it, it, that was <laughs> I'm stunned. I'm absolutely stunned. It, it looked in the bag for shortage on the bottom. I have no clue how Crystal won this. A combo of what I said of spotless luck. And the opponent just choking on a fat one. But I, I can't believe it. This was Shortage's game and match to win. And this was this was a 2-0 series victory for Lords of Cinder. They're through to the round of eight. Done and done. But the Cinderella story has not yet advanced. No, the clock has not struck mid midnight. But a little bit of a setback here. They're going to have to get it done in Gen 9 now. I can't believe Crystal won this game. I really, really can't. I would have lost a lot of money if I were if I were a betting man. I would have bet against the sports book, given the position they were in. Would have taken those three, four, five to one odds that shorted closes this out, and I would have lost my shirt. I'm really surprised by this result. Not like. Because shortage is better than crystal or anything like that. Just given the situation, given where they were and what the board state was, I cannot believe that shortage did not win this game. Right, you guys, let me know. I mean, you guys, most of you watching this, many of you are going to know GSC better than I do. So let me know what your reaction is to this. What do you think? Can you believe what we just witnessed? <laughs> This is a long video, guys, thanks to that 249 turn game. So I'm going to wrap this up. But one more time, join the Discord server in the description. Please consider liking, subscribing. Please consider donating the tour. And I guess I'll see you in the next video. But the result, Authentic Crystal 2, Shortage 1. Match count 1 to 1 between these teams. Gonna get wrapped up in Gen 9. I will see you guys in the next video.